Hi, I'm Tara Tillman of Westchester Realty. And in today's video, I want to share one way that you can supplement your income by providing BPOs or broker price opinions. Early in my career, before we had discovered our niche, a veteran agent introduced me to BPOs. Now, not only did it add much needed income, but I also gained experience and became what some would call a BPO expert. So today I'm sharing part one of how to supplement your income with BPOs. So let's get started. So what is a BPO? A broker price opinion, commonly known as a BPO, is a real estate professional's opinion of property value, an evaluation done by a real estate professional to set the asking price for a home, condominium, or land, or other type of real estate, and a broker price opinion is a report provided to a seller, buyer, or lender with the real estate agent's view of the current market value. Now, a BPO is very similar to a comparative market analysis. Broker price opinions are usually requested by lenders, while agents use comparative market analysis or CMAs to get potential listings. So a BPO often is required by lenders who have properties that are short sales, foreclosures, and to evaluate whether to give a loan modification. There are a few common terms that you should be aware of. One is the subject. The subject property is simply the property that's being evaluated. Comparable. Active listings and recent sales that affect market value of the property. And adjustments. Adjustments are the dollar value added or subtracted from a comparable property to make it more like the subject. A BPO must only be completed within the scope of assignment as specified by the customer and only if there is enough data and comparable information to produce a credible and supportive price opinion. Now also keep in mind that we talked about the fact that a comparable, um, comparables used in BPOs should be current listings and recent sales and try to stay within six months and a mile from the subject property. Now there will be times where this won't be possible and you may have to move out to the zip code, um, the city, even the county in some cases. But you want to get as close to the subject property and in as like uh, condition as the property as possible. Ethics and conduct. So agents must have a valid license, be in good standing with the state the BPO is being completed. They must be able to provide valid and acceptable documentation of licensure. Must acknowledge that they have personally visited the site, conducted the inspection, taken photos for the field assignments, personally uh, collected, personally collected comparables, and submitted the completed BPO form. Now, agents agree to take full responsibility for all information submitted upon completion and must provide analysis and opinions which are objective. Now, brokers must not discuss the BPO report with anyone besides the client and or identified user of the report except to gain access to the property. Brokers must fully disclose and receive further instructions prior to accepting a BPO assignment upon becoming aware of another broker or agent in the same office is buying, listing, and or selling the property, the subject property. Now, broker must notify the organization who ordered the BPO immediately if any issues arise that prevent you from uh, getting into the property. Brokers must perform duties in a timely, professional, ethical, and competent manner. Agents will notify a vendor or the client of any activities of any related parties which could be identified as collusion or fraudulent. Broker agents must adhere to all provisions of the Title VIII Civil Rights Act of 1968. Now, as brokers, we all know what that is, Civil Rights Act protected classes, do not violate them. <laughs> now this is a big one, competency, okay? Broker agents warrant that they are competent to complete the assignment, 
they must warrant that they have sufficient knowledge and experience in the subject property's geographic location and will not accept assignments beyond their normal service area. Agents warrant that they have independent access to data to include but not limited to the MLS coverage and other pertinent public records data for the subject market area where such access is available. Now, broker agent must obtain information regarding the property characteristics from the MLS, tax records, or other verifiable sources whenever possible. When it is not possible, the broker agent should contact the organization who ordered the BPO to obtain information or receive further instructions. As well, when you're performing a BPO, you should cite the sources of property data for both the subject and comparables. You should use verifiable sources whenever possible and cite identification numbers like MLS numbers, tax numbers, APN numbers, docket numbers, etc. Comparables should reflect the prevailing forces driving the same market the subject is located. Now, if a distress price evaluation is specifically requested for the subject, then distress comps should be used when available rather than fair market transactions to price the subject. All comparable sales dates are as of the close of escrow or the settlement date. Market condition adjustments are made as of the close of escrow as well, and proper grammar and punctuation should be employed always. Now, do not enter comments in all caps or all lowercase. Spell check BPO verbiage always. Any situation which falls outside of the guidelines requires a comment to identify the situation and to explain how it has impacted the report and the resolution used by you, the broker or agent. So let's talk a little bit about what a comparable sale is and the best way to choose a comparable sale. Well, when you're doing a BPO, you should select homes of similar size, condition and age, and the style of the subject property. They should have been recently sold and compete in the subject or competing neighborhoods. Comparable properties should compete for the same buyer. Factors to consider. The number of bedrooms and baths, square footage of the home, the age of the home, the style of the home should be similar or compete with the subject condition of the home. Lot size should be similar. The way that the property is being used should be similar. Um, site amenities such as views, waterfront, access location, both beneficial and detrimental attributes of each property. Well, there are typically two types of residential BPOs that you would be assigned, an exterior BPO and an interior BPO. Each BPO requires photos. On an exterior BPO, it's just as it suggests. It would be exterior photos of the property, street views, street sign, address verification, uh, the front of the property, any, um, thing in the, uh, anything that might be relevant to your BPO, you know, any um, damage to the property uh, that you might see. On an interior BPO, however, you would be required to provide exterior as well as interior photos of that property. So every BPO should answer the following. Is the report a value conclusion, supportable, defendable, and credible? Have you reconciled any prior sales? Do the sales comparables compete with the subject? Are the adjustments adequately explained? Can you reconcile your value to the adjusted and un unadjusted sales price? Is the adjusted value range too wide? Did the narrative address all questions that could be anticipated coming from the client? Is that explanation reasonable? Is there a reconciliation statement in the report? And did you provide the whys and the why nots? Earning potential. So from the very beginning, we discussed the fact that this is a really good way to bring in additional income if you're a new agent or you know, you've been practicing real estate for a long time and you're looking for additional ways to supplement income, this is definitely one good way to do that. And you can generally expect to 
um, earn between $40 and $125 per BPO. Now, there are some considerations that I want to discuss, and that is you want to really think about the time it's going to take to complete a BPO, the time it's going to take you to drive to the property, and I would go ahead and map the address where I'm coming from or my office address to the assigned property to see how long it's going to take me to get there. Um, always map the location of the property before accepting an assignment. Now you'll want to streamline the process to maximize your hourly rate um, because you want to make sure that any BPO that you complete is worth the time it takes to get it done. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick overview of the BPO process and expectations. Look out for part two on how you can master BPOs. I hope this information is insightful and you're able to use this tool to supplement your income. Please like, subscribe, and share this training with other agents who might benefit from the information. Until next time, I'm Tara Tillman of Westchester Realty. Thank you for watching. Well, I hope